Prison Slang 101, words that mean something totally different inside the penitentiary than they do out in the free world, okay? First word, here we go, fishing. If you're fishing in prison, honey, you're making an elaborate contraption out of laundry bags, bed sheets, batteries, ponytail holder, and the elastic on your under underwear okay on your bloomers and you're tying it all together and then you're making like a little sack at the end and you're putting whatever contraband you have in there most of the time people do this in solitary confinement when they don't have access to things like coffee sugar candy notes pens they want to pass something to each other there's a little uh, slit under the door that's like this big right sometimes it's like that big that little slit is enough room for people to phew, 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 phew. I don't know if that's the noise it makes, but that's how I imagine it. And people slang that thing under the door and they fish it to another cell and the other person catches it under that little slit and then boom, person has their stuff, has their little contraband, has their little coffee packets and they're good to go for the day. So that's fishing. Number two, a pancake. Pancake in prison, baby. A pancake is somebody that flip flops, okay? They flip flop between being a femme and being a stud. And what I mean by that is a femme is someone who's very feminine, very girly, wears makeup. A stud is somebody who's dominant, who's hard, who sags their pants, shaves their head talks like a boy moves like a boy but a pancake is somebody that flip-flops right in the middle depending on what is beneficial to them if you've got canteen and this person is hungry and they're a pancake they're gonna be whatever you want them to be if you're a stud then they're gonna put on heels and lipstick and twist around and, and tighten their pants and all that stuff and act real girly. But if you're real girly, they're gonna drop those pants, they're gonna shave that hair or they're gonna lock it up and baby, they're gonna start acting like a boy. Like, hey baby, what's up? What's up, baby? Okay, they're gonna be whatever they need to be so they can eat and they can survive. It's a survival game and they're gonna do whatever they need to do to make that happen. Number three, a brick. A brick in prison is a very common meal, the most common meal. It's a meal made out of ramen noodle soup, potato chips, and then maybe other things like sausage, pickle, condiments, cheese. It's a very, very stocky little thing that you make in a potato chip bag. It's a meal and yet you heat it up with hot water and you mash it down and then you eat it and it fills you up. That's what a brick is in prison. Moving right along. A Pac-Man. Might be self-explanatory if you really think about it, but if you, if you don't get it, here it is. You know what a Pac-Man does, right? In the game, the little 80s game. You know what that is in prison? It's somebody that's eating up on everything like the Pac-Man in the game. In prison, a Pac-Man is someone that's eating up on anything that moves. Usually their motive is because they're hungry and they want canteen or they want a girlfriend who's gonna take care of them who has money. So they'll go, eat up on her so that she can, you know, be locked in and share her food and stuff like that. A Pac-Man, even though they usually have a motive, they don't always have to have a motive. They can literally just be a Pac-Man because they like to just eat up on coochie cats. That's it. That's it and that's all. So a Pac-Man is not something good. It's derogatory. It's not a compliment. And you don't want to be called a Pac-Man in a female prison. Okay? Not good. Beating the compound. Beating the compound is quite literally beating the soles of your feet against the concrete on the compound. It means that you are actively on a mission. You're trying to get somewhere, maybe see your girlfriend, maybe pick something up, maybe drop something off, maybe get some money. Beating feet, beating souls, getting down on this mission because you got to get there. You got to get there. You got to beat those souls on the concrete of the compound. So I'm sure you guys probably heard this one because it's very common, but a kite is not something you fly in the sky in prison. Okay, it's not. Um, a kite in prison is something that you are going to have to fly from one inmate to another. It's usually very important in nature. It's usually having to go far distances and get there in many kind of crazy ways, like maybe in a food tray, maybe in a laundry buggy, maybe through the air, maybe on a fishing line, maybe through several inmates, maybe in someone's coochie pack. You don't know. But the kite is flying from one inmate to another, from one dormitory to another, from one compound to another. And it's going far because it's got a very important message, okay? That's what a kite is in prison. And last but certainly not least, speaking of the cootie coop pack, shelf. A shelf is not a piece of furniture in your house when you're in prison. A shelf is right up there somewhere between the, the cervix and, you know, the uterus, okay? I, I'm not a doc. I don't know all the anatomical happenings of the female parts. But I know that when girls want to tuck something or hide something, if they go inside the cootie cow pack and um, right when they go in, if they go a little bit to the side and they kind of tuck, there's this little like, uh, this little, this little shelf. And the things that you want to hide, they'll just, you know, they'll sit right there up on the shelf like this. A uh, category five hurricane come through there and try to suck that thing out, but no amount of coughing and squatting is going to get it out, I promise. Okay, it's sitting on the shelf like your firstborn, quite literally. 
The shelf is a great way to tote around anything illegal that someone would want in prison. And it's right up inside a woman's fa woman's fanny pack. Okay? They're, they're built-in fanny pack. You know what I'm saying? Prison Slang 101, we are a wrap. See y'all in the next one. Love y'all. Later. Why do you talk about your story like you have absolutely no remorse for what you did? You talk about prison and going to prison like you're proud of it. Not every felon has it as easy as you. Why don't you come struggle down here with the rest of us felons? Nobody cares about this stuff. You did your time. Move on with your life already. Why are you living in the past? Get over it. Thieves are scum and you deserved all the time you got. You probably deserve life. I'm so tired of these stories. I wish you'd get off my for you page because who cares in all caps? Who cares? You can see it in your eyes. You have absolutely no sympathy and no remorse for what you did. Convict. You had pretty privilege in prison. You had white privilege in prison. You have all that when you got out. So that's why it was so easy. And last but certainly not least, what the fuck is wrong with your lips? I went to prison pregnant with my first and only child at the age of 28. I did a lot of bad things to a lot of good people and I hurt my family severely. Besides hurting those people, I lost out on the opportunity to see every first that my son would have, his first day of school, his first tooth, his first words, his first steps. I also missed out on my family and all the milestones that they went through. I also missed out on the opportunity to graduate from university that I was going to, to start a career and to create a life that would ensure that I would have a financial future that was pretty steady and safe. There were some things that were out of my control that happened to me, but most of the things that happened to me were in my control. I grew up with a beautiful life, both parents very successful, affluent schools, and a great education, every opportunity afforded to me, and I pissed it all away behind desperation and addiction. Something, which by the way, happens to a lot of people, some of the most unexpected people at that. So I made a decision. I made a decision while I was in those prison walls to do better. I knew that the only person that could create a different and better life for me was me. So I'm not going to stop sharing my story and I'm not going to stop sharing it the way I want to share it because my story is not woe is me. My story is not about getting empathy or sympathy or anyone to feel bad for me. I did my time. My time is over. I'm free now. My story is not about getting anything from any of you out there. My story is about this is me living my best life. And by the way, I went to prison for 10 years for burglary, overcame an addiction, had my first and only child while I was incarcerated. Now I have him full time and we have a beautiful home, a beautiful condo, beautiful things, a beautiful bank account, a beautiful job. He goes to a great school. The tuition is hella expensive, but he loves it. And guess what? All those things happened to me, but yet I'm still here living my best life. Been out almost four years and haven't taken one step backwards. Despite the fact that recidivism is at an all-time high, and if you don't know what that is, it's the likelihood that a criminal will relapse on drugs, reoffend, and end back up in prison. Recidivism is at an all-time high. The odds are stacked against every person that gets out. It's extremely difficult for them to get back on their feet, but I did it, despite all that. You know why? The reason why is because I created this life for me. I created it for my son and I. I did this, me, I did it. And you know what? You can do it too. Yeah, you can. If you have a son or daughter or best friend or sister or niece or nephew that's in the shithole, strung out on drugs, going to prison, committing crimes, they can do it too. They can crawl out of the dumpster fire that their life has become and they can be living their best life like me. Yeah, you can do it too. No matter what the odds are that are stacked against you, no matter what the statistics are, no matter what people say, just like you choose to make bad choices and make your life difficult, therefore you end up struggling, you can choose to do better like I did. That's my message, one of support, one of hope, one of encouragement, that just like I did it, you can do it too. And so therefore, I'm not gonna stop sharing my story the way I want to share it. And you guys can say whatever you want if you dislike it. It's not gonna deter me and you're not gonna stop me with your negativity. And for the record, yes, I have filler in my lips. You're not an Inspector Gadget or a Sherlock Holmes for calling it out. We can all see that they're blown the hell up. They're not for everyone and everyone's not gonna like them, but you know who does like them? Me. They make me happy every day. For almost 10 years, I didn't have any semblance of femininity. I couldn't do anything girly. So having my lips like this fills my buttercup every single day and I love it. You not liking it does not affect me at all. Okay? God bless y'all. If you enjoyed this video, please follow. See y'all in the next one.